Hi there, it is John Ruffle, and welcome to this beginner's guide to guitars. And particularly, I'm aiming this toward those of you who are beginning to enter into worship, um, contemporary Christian worship. Perhaps you're playing guitar for the first time and you're just learning. And just want to encourage you, just make a joyful noise unto the Lord right where you are at home. You don't have to perform for anyone because the Lord is the one who hears and sees your heart. Right, so having said that, I want to um, just go into a little bit of detail about guitar tuners, because there's nothing worse than having a guitar that is out of tune. I've got four tuners for us to look at today. Basically, a guitar tuner is something that clips onto the headstock of the guitar, and I'll show you in a moment how that works. Here's a very simple one around um, less than 10 pounds in the stores or less than, certainly less than $15 US. And here we have, I clipped it onto my guitar. And if we just pluck the string, copy, you see when it's in tune, it goes green. And then you can do each each string individually, here's the bottom E. You see it's sharp, so it's going orange, all right? So we'd have to bring that down a bit to get them. Do each string one by one. Now, of course, strings aren't constant. And so if you have the best guitar tuner in the world, but you don't have new strings on your guitar, or the guitar's not been set up properly, or you're not playing it properly, Obviously, the best guitar tune in the world isn't going to solve your problem. But um, there's nothing worse than out of tune guitar. I recommend you have ideally two guitar tuners in your kit bag if you're going to a worship set, because you never know somebody else in the band might not have one, or the battery might go out on one of them, and so you've always got a backup. And they're not that expensive. So that's the beauty of these small ones. And also this one, by the way, is the Tiger CT99. And it's got a movable neck for different angles. So it's very, very convenient. It's got quite a bright readout. And I'm going to show you a close up of it now. This is the uh, Tiger Chromatic Tuner. Basically, chromatic tuner simply means it's taking the um, sound waves from the headstock, from the strings through the wood of the headstock, and it is not, so it doesn't have a microphone in it. And they're far more accurate than any microphone based tuners, which people used to have a lot of. There's also another type of tuner, and that, of course, is the inline tuner that you put in, plug into an electric guitar. We're not dealing with those right now. These tuners are quite okay for using with electric guitars because you've still got the sound trapping through the strings to the headstock. One in the, in the picture there obviously got a green screen. This one's got an orange screen. Um, and let me just show you one other feature on this. When you turn it on, it's got a little button here. You can't really see it just to bounce see it there. And you have to press it for a couple of seconds for it to turn off and on. When you turn it on, you can then toggle it to what instrument you are going to use. And so this one right now, it's got G there for guitar. But if you press that, it will go to bass, violin, ukulele. Now, if inadvertently you turn it on, and you've got it set for the wrong instrument, you're going to find that it won't tune all the strings. Typically on a guitar, it doesn't like the B string, okay? So you've got to watch that. If you're out playing and, you know, you're tuning up, you're not looking at that small little letter there. It could easily have toggled to the wrong type of, of uh, instrument. Right, so now, second one I've got, this one's actually the cheapest one, and it just clips on the same way, but it isn't rotating. It doesn't have a swivel on it. 
So this one, um, it's a little bit di more difficult to see. Again, little switch on the side, let's press it for a couple of seconds, and it comes alive. Now, I've tested all of these to see how accurate they are um, on, on a couple of my guitars, okay? This one, um, it's nice because it's so small and light, it's just going with your picks. And, um, but there is something I want to warn you about that this is it, by the way, the Macedo. Uh, it's the Macedo T11. And what I want to warn you about is the fact that it looks very much like far more expensive Diadio guitar tuner. And, but it isn't, don't be deceived. This is about as cheap as you're going to get, three US dollars, I think more likely five pounds, more likely five or six US dollars, to be honest with you. But there you have the, uh, the Mosido, which is a off Chinese brand. I don't know much about them. I don't think anybody does, to be honest with you. But this one does the job it's called to do, very simple. And you know something, for a backup tuner just to carry around, that really is not bad and it's just not going to cost you much. Um, and just having a spare one of these can get you out of trouble um, very easily. Right, now I'm going to go on to the most technically advanced one. Um, and I'm not really saying that Tiger are the best tuners but they certainly offer good value for money. And this one is the Tiger JT-12B. And the Tiger JT-12B has got more features on it than the other ones. So let's just turn it on and see what happens, shall we? So we press that and nothing happens. We're gonna press the top button and it comes alive. Now, if you notice, if you're very smart, you'll see it says 430 at the bottom, right? Now, I'm going to put this on back on my Alvarez. Remember, we had that toppy pretty much in tune for uh, with the first tuner we showed you, the first Tiger tuner. So it should still be in tune, should be showing us an E, correct? Let's see what happens. Whoa, it's way sharp. Right, why is that? Is it because the tune is no good? No, what's happened is we've turned it on and it is not set on concert pitches, set on 430. You have to toggle it back to the correct. Now, some people love to tune down to 432. Um, the guy that sets up my Alvarez for me is a great guy. He's done setups for some of the biggest name people in Britain. I was very fortunate that a friend of mine, our worship leader actually, uh, led me to him. And he did a superb job on setting up the Alvarez he just saw. Um, and he'll give you a lecture for about half an hour about how 432 is in harmony with nature. Well, it's not in harmony with, with the keyboard in your local church, and it's not going to be in harmony with my worship leader, Joe, who's in Ireland. So let's just toggle it again and get back up to, you've guessed it, we're going to stop at 440, which is concert pitch. Now, of all the tuners I'm showing you, this is the only one that will actually tune down to 432, okay? So if you're doing alternate tunings, this little uh, Tiger JT-12B might be the one for you. And also you've got, on the, you've got on the top button, two buttons on the top button, and it will toggle between instruments. Right, now that's just to prove that the guitar is still in tune. I'm going to put it on guitar at 440. And I'll put it back on the headstock of the Alvarez and see if it's pretty much in tune. The toppy again. 
Here we go. Oops. Here we go. Get that. Right, so the the beauty of this tuner is it's very versatile and it is not very expensive, as I will show you. Here it is, JT12B, and it's actually less expensive than the smaller one I showed you, which has got less features, and they both work equally well. So, but you have to be really, really, really careful using this tuner because it's so easy when you turn it on to press both those buttons and end up with the wrong tuning and you're wondering why it's not tuning properly, okay? So if, you, if you're into alternate tunings and if you're using it at home, this isn't a bad instrument to have. However, we've also got this fourth tuner, which is the snark tuner, which is supposed to be, they've got a fantastic reputation. Dead easy to use the snark. All you do is press this middle button. I can press it. Just have to press it for a moment and it turns on and it's got a beautiful display on it. I'm gonna put it on the headstock of the Alvarez again. Let's have a look and see what happens when we give you a top E with it. Ready? There we go. Really easy to see. And it's pretty accurate as well. They are reliable. Snark are known. They started off making tunes for electric guitars and later on branched out into these. And if you don't mind the size of it, it's not a bad instrument. However, look at the gooseneck. Now, when that's on your guitar, it means it's very easy to manipulate around. So you can see it from any angle, it's quite bright, but also that's a weakness because word on the street is when you're gigging with it, it's very easy for that ball, it's got two ball socket joints, it's very easy for one of those to break and then you've got a tuner that isn't working for you. Now this one is the SN5X, and there's loads of different versions of it. I'm a bit disappointed because when it arrived in the post, this is how it arrived. The box was completely crushed. And I know you don't use a tuner in the box, but I wasn't very impressed with that at all. It just came in an envelope from Amazon and that was inside. And not only that, but it comes with a little pouch. And this was the state of play of the pouch. I haven't tried to unfold it or unbend it. That is the pouch you're supposed to keep it in. I'm sorry, but that is unacceptable. And here is the, um, here is the website for uh, the snark, and it's a very snazzy, snarkish website. But the problem with this website is it doesn't tell you much about the tuner. This is the SN5X, and um, they've got various, there's a ukulele one. That one is, I don't know what's different about that one, except it's got a different clamp on it, I think. If you go to the super tight ones, the more recent ones, then you've got another variety of instruments here. You've got the ST8, and they say this is more accurate. I don't know whether it is or not, it probably is slightly. If you go to the high Z one, come on, doesn't want to show me the high Z, here we go. This one shows you exact hertz 
that string is play into. And when I, it's also the super tight ones, at least some of them have got a chromatic tuner built. Uh, sorry, not a chromatic tuner. They've got a metronome built in. And I'm saying all that because when I bought this, there's a lot of research on the internet for this show and also for buying this, and it was not clear at all what this snark, what the specification were on this snark. And I thought it was coming with a metronome. I also thought it was coming, you could adjust the, uh, the tuning of it and you can't. It's just very basic, but it's high quality, except for the fact that it could break there. Around 10 to 12 pounds, maybe 12, 14 pounds with postage. Right, so that's so much for the tuners. Of course, and it, there's nothing quite like tuning the guitar the old fashioned way, which is you just go to the fifth fret from the bottom string and then go to your tune your D and then there's your G and then your B on the fourth, or so you can't see it, on the fourth fret and then back to the fifth fret for your top E. So you just go like that. And that is how we all used to tune our guitars. You can tune it to somebody else's instrument or you can have a tuning fork, which I like to call a pitch fork. And you just bang that and it gives you a 440 middle A. The A just past the middle C on the piano. So um, what else have I got to say about it? I've said that a good tuner can't fix a bad guitar and it can't fix our playing. Remember a string when it vibrates, it will change its frequency as it vibrates depending on how hard you hit the string. So even if you get a super accurate tuner, and I'm gonna be showing you a super accurate tuner in a few weeks time. I've got one back ordered and I'm gonna do a review on it when it arrives. Um, so even if you get technically absolutely perfect spot on, then still you can have, it can't necessarily sound right to your ears because it's all about what you hear. It's not about the technical absolute 100% sound that you're hearing. So enjoy your music, enjoy worshiping the Lord, Get one of these tuners. I don't, I mean, I'm not recommending the brand, um, although if you get a snark, you certainly won't be going anywhere wrong with it. Get a couple, get a cheapie that you can put in your bag to carry around just as a backup if you need it. And I'll be going more about tuners in the future when I get my super duper electronic tuner that is accurate. To point two of a cent, which is pretty accurate. It's more accurate than my ears and your ears. And uh, oh yeah, one other point. We were on a Zoom yesterday with with our worship leader in Ireland, and did, he did a worship set. And because uh, we do live worship on Zoom, and of course, you really can only have one person joining in at a time. You have to have other people's mics muted that's because of latency or the delay in the signals it goes up the satellite down again through your computer you can get up to half a second delay easily but i noticed that on on the second set he did after some preaching uh it sounded like the toppy or the uh b string was slightly out of tune so i asked him about this afterwards and i said did you put you put a capo on didn't you a capo which is one of these. And he says, yeah, I had it on the second fret. I said, can you check your tuning tomorrow with and without the capo on? And he did that today. And uh, we think that it was slightly out of tune because the capo wasn't quite close enough to the fret. It was more in the middle of the, of the, uh, of that particular second fret. And so there's lots of different things that can affect tuning, uh, not just make sure it's technically perfect, but it does help. 
So on that note, I'm going to say thank you for watching today. And God bless you. John Ruffle, praise Jesus always. Amen. <laughs>